Two blocks A and B of masses 2 kg and 4 kg respectively are attached to the ends of a light inextensible string. Initially A is held on a rough fixed plane. The plane is inclined to horizontal ground at an angle theta where tan theta is 3 quarters. Let's deal with that first. So we know that if this is theta, tan theta is 3 quarters, 3, 4, 5 triangle, and that's going to give us that sine theta is equal to 3 fifths, and that cos theta is 4 fifths. The string passes over a small, smooth, light pulley P that is fixed at the top of the plane. The part of the string from A to P is parallel to a line of greatest slope of the plane. Block A is held on the plane with the distance AP greater than 3 metres. Block B hangs freely below P at a distance of 3 metres above the ground as shown in the diagram. The coefficient of friction between A and the plane is mu. Block A is released from rest with the string taut. By modelling the blocks as particles, find the potential energy lost by the whole system as a result of B falling 3 metres. So, we can think about the potential energy lost by B when it falls from its starting position down to the ground. So, that is going to be, it's got a mass of 4, M times G times H, and calculate that, and that is 117.6 joules. Now we'd like the PE gained by the other particle, the one that's on the plane, that's A. Now consider, because we know the string is tight and B falls 3 metres, that means that A must go 3 metres up the slope. So what's the vertical height gained? Well, we know that theta is here, so it's going to be 3 times sine theta, which we know is 3 fifths. So that is going to be 9 over 5. That's the vertical height gained. So the PE gained by A, its mass is 2 times 9.8 times the height that it's risen, and that is going to be 35.28 joules. Therefore, the potential energy lost by the system is just this number, take away this number, giving us 82.32 joules. Now in part B of the question, it says to use the work energy principle to find the value of mu. So we need to think about the kinetic energy now. So the kinetic energy gained, so we're in part B, is going to be the kinetic energy gained by A and the kinetic energy gained by B. Now we can see in the information here that the speed with which B hits the ground is 4.5 and consequently A will be traveling at the same speed. So it's going to be a half times mass times the velocity squared, and then we've got the other objects as well, which is a, a half times two times 4.5 squared. Calculating that gives us 60.75 joules. Therefore, the loss of mechanical energy is going to be 82.32, Take away 60.75, which gives us 21.57 joules. The mechanical energy lost must be lost due to resistance within the system, or in this case, friction. So, 
let's think about f max. That's equal to mu n, where n is the normal reaction force here. Now we know that this is 2g. This component here will be 2g cos theta, which is going to be 4 fifths, as decided over here. So that is going to give us 8g on 5. So the f max is just going to be mu times that. And that's going to give us 8 mu g on 5. So that force times the distance covered, which we know was 3 meters, has got to be equal to the 21.57. And so 8 mu g over 5 is equal to 7.19. And then mu will be 7.19 times 5 over 8 times 9.8. And that gives us that mu is equal to 0 0.459. Okay, let's go back to the question. After B hits the ground, A continues to move up the plane, but does not reach the pulley in the subsequent motion. Block A comes to instantaneous rest after moving a total distance of 3 plus D, where the 3 is what it moved while block B was dropping. So what we're trying to find here, well it does say here that we're trying to find D, which is the subsequent distance that it goes up when it's just moving freely and there'll be a resistive force. So it says ignoring air resistance, use the work energy principle to find the value of D. So I think what we might need is just another diagram here. So what we've got is our object A here, and it will move up the plane to here. So this is when B hits the ground, and so it's going to travel a further distance of D. Now the vertical height, if this one is D, is once again going to be D sine theta, which, and sine theta is 3 fifths, is going to be 3D on 5. So, we have 2 times 9.8 times 3d over 5, which is the potential energy that we're going to gain in going from here to here. Then there's the work done against the resistance. So we know the value of mu now. We're just going to substitute it into there. So it's going to be 8 times 0 0.459 times 9.8 divided by 5 times the distance traveled up the slope. And since it becomes, uh, or since it comes to rest here, that's got to be equal to the kinetic energy that we've lost. So a half times 2 times 4.5 squared. That's just a half mv squared. And so we get 11.76d plus 7.19712d is equal to 20.25. So 18.95712d is equal to 20.25 and that gives us d is 20.25 divided by 18.95712 which is 1.07 correct and that's going to be in meters obviously correct to three significant figures